Welcome to a journey, as we delve into a story that's been shrouded in mystery and controversy, the Ardennes Abbey Massacre. We can all agree that war is hell, but there is a difference between war fighting and war crimes. At some point between the 7th of June and the 17th of June in 1944, a time when the world was engulfed in the throes of World War II, Normandy, France, a region known for its picturesque landscapes, was about to witness an event that would leave a dark mark on its history. The Ardennes Abbey, a tranquil monastery, was about to become the stage for a chilling war crime. But who were the perpetrators? And what led them to commit such a horrific act? As we delve deeper into this mystery, we'll uncover the shocking details of this tragic event. The 12th SS Panzer Division, also known as the Hitler Jugend, was stationed at the Abbey. This division was composed mainly of members from the Hitler Youth, young soldiers indoctrinated with Nazi ideology. Their fanaticism was well known, but could such young soldiers really be capable of such a heinous act? As we explore the mindset and motivations of these soldiers, we'll gain a deeper understanding of the circumstances that led to this tragedy. It is estimated that over 150 Canadian soldiers were taken prisoner and then killed by German soldiers during the fierce fighting that raged across the Normandy countryside. Soldiers of the 12th SS Panzer Division pulled dead and wounded Canadians into the road and then reversed their tanks over the bodies. Apparently the streets were running with blood as they did this, in full view of their Canadian prisoners. Around June 7th, it is estimated that 70 to 100 of the captured Canadians were processed and sent to German prisoner of war camps. Eleven Canadians were handpicked and taken to the Abbey Ardennes. But they did not return because on the 8th of June, at hourly intervals, they were taken one by one into the garden, where they were shot in the back of the head. They were from the Shearbrook Fusiliers, the 27th Armoured Regiment, and the North Nova Scotia Highlanders. During the next day, seven more members of the North Nova Scotia Highlanders were selected and taken to the Abbey and were interrogated. Then each man was either bludgeoned to death or shot. Up to 20 Canadian soldiers were brutally massacred in the Abbey's garden. These soldiers, who had been fighting valiantly for their country, were captured and taken to the Abbey. But instead of being treated as prisoners of war, they met a grim fate. But why were these soldiers chosen? But what led to this brutal act? The answers lie in the heat of the Battle of Normandy, a fierce and bloody conflict which was a turning point in the war. Some of the Canadian bodies were buried in the garden, and the other two Canadians were killed nearby, on or around the 17th of June, 1944. It was quite clear to the people who investigated and found those bodies that it was likely to be a mass grave and caused by the enemy. They were only found because, in January of 1945, a 15-year-old boy returned to the abbey as his parents owned some of the land nearby. While he was walking around the abbey grounds, he noticed the ground had been disturbed, so he began digging, and after only a few inches under the top of the mud, he found what looked like a human jawbone. He then decided to go and tell his mother, Francine. She was in disbelief at first, but decided they would return to dig some more. They both quickly found more bones, and then they found bodies. Eventually, six bodies were removed from the grave. After some checks, the authorities noted that some had been shot in the back of the head and the others had been bludgeoned with a blunt object like a rifle butt or a club. Around March of 1945, another one of Francine's sons returned to be with his family, and not long after his arrival, he found more disturbed ground around the abbey. It turned out he had found the mass grave of the eleven Canadian soldiers who were shot in the back of the head in the garden. The commander of the 12th SS Panzer Division, Kurt Meyer, who served in the Waffen SS and participated in the Battle of France, Operation Barbarossa, and other engagements during World War II, used the abbey as his regimental headquarters. From the abbey's towers, he had a clear view of the battlefield. But was he responsible for this war crime? Or was there more to the story? 
As we dig deeper, we'll explore the controversy surrounding Maya's role in the massacre and the subsequent trial that sought to bring him to justice. Kurt Meyer was captured in Belgium only months after these events in September of 1944. He denied any knowledge of the deaths at the Abbey and was held as a prisoner of war until December 1945, when he was tried in the German town of Aurich for the murder of unarmed Allied prisoners of war in Normandy. There is an intelligence report dated the 24th of October 1945 that states the following. Kurt Meyer, standing approximately five foot, six inches, is the personification of National Socialism. His mind is paralysed with propaganda he is unable to consider any other point of view, so he was still every inch the arrogant Nazi. The Canadian War Crimes Commission worked hard for over a year to get Kurt Meyer convicted and he was tried on five related charges before the Canadian War Crimes Commission in December of 1945 as follows. First, prior to 7th of June 1944, Meyer had incited troops under his command to deny quarter to surrendering Allied soldiers. Second, on or around 7th of June 1944, Meyer was responsible for his troops killing 23 prisoners of war at Buren and Orthy. Third, on or around 8th of June 1944, Meyer ordered his troops to kill seven prisoners of war at his headquarters at the Ardennes Abbey. Fourth, on or around 8th of June 1944, Meyer was responsible for his troops killing seven prisoners of war, as above. And fifth, on or around 8th of June 1944, Meyer was responsible for his troops killing eleven prisoners of war, as above. The trial resulted in conviction on the first, fourth and fifth charges. Court President Major General Harry Foster sentenced Meyer to suffer death by being shot. However, his sentence was later commuted to life in prison because given the lack of direct evidence that Meyer ordered the murders, the death sentence was indefensible. Life imprisonment in New Brunswick's Dorchester Penitentiary should have been sufficient punishment, especially when, according to his son, Meyer found it degrading to be among criminals, murderers and perverts. Therefore, his 1951 transfer to prison in West Germany and his release on 7th of September 1954 was wrong. He died of a heart attack on 23rd of December 1961. At the age of 51 years old and allegedly around 15,000 people attended his funeral. The Abbey was eventually taken over by the Canadians after some really fierce fighting. Let's take a minute to remember and honour the victims of the Ardennes Abbey Massacre. Of the North Nova Scotia Highlanders were Private Ivan Crow, Private Charles Doucette, Corporal Joseph McIntyre, Private Reginald Keeping, Private James Moss, Private Walter Doherty, Private Hollis McKeel, Private Hugh MacDonald, Private George McNaughton, Private George Miller, Private Thomas Mont, and Private Raymond Moore. Of the 27th Armoured Regiment, the Sherbrooke Fusilier Regiment, were Trooper James Bolt, Trooper George Gill, Trooper Thomas Henry, Trooper Roger Lockhead, Trooper Harold Philp, and Lieutenant Thomas Windsor. On 17th of June, it is believed two more Canadians were executed here. Both of the Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry Highlanders were Lieutenant Fred Williams, and Lance Corporal George Pollard. Despite the controversy surrounding the responsibility for the massacre, one thing is clear. The Ardennes Abbey Massacre was a blatant violation of the Geneva Conventions. These conventions were established to protect the rights of prisoners of war, but in this case they were grossly violated. This event serves as a grim reminder of the atrocities of war and the importance of upholding international law. As we conclude our journey into the past, we're left with a chilling tale of war and its horrors. The Ardennes Abbey Massacre is a stark reminder of the importance of peace and humanity. If you found this journey through history enlightening, please like, share and subscribe for more deep dives into our history. Together, we remember. Together, we learn.